Good afternoon, and welcome to the Wednesday afternoon conference call with Trusts Unlimited. This is Jim George speaking. I'm the non-attorney spokesman and facilitator for Trusts Unlimited, and I'd like to thank all of you for taking the time to listen to this call, particularly those of you that are calling in for the first time and those that we know over the next 24 to 48 hours will be listening to the replay. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. We have a standard format here. We like to move quickly and bottom line the information for you. We know you're busy people and you have other things to do. Uh, so we uh, like to spend just a few minutes talking about the revaluation of the Iraqi dinar, which we continue to believe is the base currency for the revaluation of these other currencies. A few minutes talking about the program we've put in place to assist you, both pre and post RV, and then we like to go ahead and do a little bit of Q&A. So let's get started. First, by way of disclaimer, Trusts Unlimited is not the purveyor of the dinar and these other currencies. We're not advocating the sale or purchase of these currencies, but we are sharing with you information that we think is relevant as substantial currency holders ourselves. First, uh, let's talk a little bit about the potential for the reinstitution of the Iraqi dinar. There's a lot going on in Iraq. Uh, the postponement of the reinstitution of the currencies is based on a number of things, but we do believe that the reinstitution of the Iraqi dinar is something that will happen sooner rather than later, hopefully in the second quarter. We were hopeful for the first quarter, and there were attempts to reinstitute in the first quarter, but uh, there were some complications, which I'll get to uh, in just a moment. Uh, looking at the situation in country in Iraq, first we have to deal with the political uh, scenario. Uh, there is a tentative vote scheduled tomorrow, Thursday the 21st, for the last four remaining unfilled ministerial seats in uh, Mahdi's cabinet. Uh, three of those four seats look as though they will probably be acceptable, but the Minister of the Interior is still one that is a sticking block, so hopefully we'll get at least three of the four in place, leaving only one ministerial seat. That would be a good situation. There are still final negotiations with regard to Article 140 of the Constitution, and that has to do with resolving disputed areas in Kurdistan. There are a lot of issues having to deal with Kurdistan. It's a rather complicated situation. I've been thinking about this. The only thing I can think of to describe what's uh, the situation with Kurdistan is uh, that it is similar to the situation we have in the United States with uh, Indian reservations. They're semi-autocephalous regions where they, uh, uh, Native Americans outside of a reservation, of course, would be subject to United States laws, but they do have within their um, reservations uh, laws that uh, would supersede U.S. law. That's why they're semi-autocephalous, and the same thing holds true with Kurdistan. Uh, the Kurds are just a separate group. They're not Muslims. Uh, they're not Christians. They're not Jews. Uh, and they are a group that is rather tribal and insists upon their own culture and some of their, their own, uh, once again, uh, autocephalous regions. Uh, the United States, unfortunately, still remains uh, concerned, understandably, about undue Iranian influence in Iraq having to do with several areas, one being the, uh, the funding of corrupt Shia pro-Iranian officials in the country, and the other uh, having to do with the Iranians uh, funding these roaming militias uh, in Iraq. Some are the Revolutionary Guard Iranian militias. Other are just uh, pro-Iranian Iraqi militias. And so the United States is concerned about that. They're also concerned about Iraq attempting to circumvent United States sanctions against Iran. Uh, there was a moratorium against that because the United States understood that uh, Iraq simply needed to purchase the natural gas from Iran until they get their electrical grid back up. But there are other issues having to do with uh, the Iranians surreptitiously getting the uh, euro or the U.S. dollar, which, of course, the U.S. sanctions is trying to avoid. 
So all of these issues have contributed to the postponement of the reinstitution of the Dinaran country. Uh, however, there is one other kind of interesting issue. Uh, the, the Kurdish officials, once again, we're talking about the autocephalous region of Kurdistan, have not been paid by the government of Iraq in calendar year 2019. Uh, this is a continuing dispute, but the reason they have not been paid is because the government is attempting the reinstitution of the dinar prior to making those payments. If they make payments to officials in an autocephalous region, that opens the, uh, the 2019 budget up for renegotiation, which the government of Baghdad does not want to do. So they're holding out, hoping that they can get the reinstitution of the dinar and then make payments based on those calculations. Uh, if they're unable to do that, then of course they're going to have to recalibrate the 2019 budget. So hopefully, despite all these complications, uh, they're going to get everything online and we're going to see the reinstitution in the very near future. Now the fact that they have not as yet reinstituted means, once again, that individuals that have not as yet gotten their affairs in order or may not understand what that involves will now have time to do so. To that end, Trust Unlimited has put a turnkey program in place to assist you. It's a two-phased program. Phase one is pre-RV, phase two is post-RV. Pre-RV involves the establishment of a pre-RV package of asset protection trusts. Post-RV involves all the product services and professional referrals that will be made available to you after the revaluation of these currencies and after you've acquired this wealth. So let's start with phase one which is the establishment of your pre-RV package of asset protection trusts. Very simply, a trust is a legal instrument one can establish to hold, to manage, and to protect assets. Trusts can fall into some basic categories. Now, recently, I've received uh, several calls from individuals who have asked a lot of questions about the various asset protection instruments that are available to them. I can only surmise from this, uh, this rash of questions that some of our people are talking to some other folks, which is fine, uh, but I want to touch on these other instruments that are being discussed. One of the groups of instruments are the sub-S corporations and LLCs, both of which would be ca categorized as limited liability companies. Now, both uh, sub-S corporations and LLCs are business constructs and are appropriate for establishing businesses. In our view, they are not appropriate if you want bulletproof asset protection. A number of courts have ruled that if an LLC or a sub S is owned by an individual or a closely held group or family, that that LLC can be pierced in a civil proceeding. So in our view, they simply do not provide the asset protection that you need. A lot of individuals have what's referred to as a revocable trust. A revocable trust is a trust which will allow your estate to bypass the cost and delay of probate, but a revocable trust will provide neither the privacy or the asset protection that one needs in order to protect these currencies post-RV. There is another vehicle out there that's being discussed a lot. It is the Massachusetts Business Trust, and then there are other forms of business trusts. They are similar to our trust. However, here is the great weakness with the business trust. The business trust, unlike our package, is a single trust. That means that all of your assets are within that one trust. That also means that if any asset within that trust, like a car, for example, was involved in a car accident and a suit were to uh, subsequently prevail, that means that because the trust that owns the car also owns all of your other assets, that means that your entire estate, your entire net worth, and all of those other assets would also be involved in a civil proceeding. That is not the case with our trust package. Our trust package has two very mm -hmm. critical components that none of these other trust packages seem to have. First, our trust package has something referred to as a retroactive universal flight provision. Now, what does that mean? 
most sophisticated irrevocable trusts have a flight provision, meaning that the settler of the trust has the ability to transfer the jurisdiction of the trust somewhere else. Here's the problem. A flight provision is almost always utilized when a person is involved in a civil suit. But a lot of the court jurisdictions are saying that they will nullify that flight provision because under a conventional flight provision, you as the plaintiff in a civil suit would be taking an affirmative action after a suit was filed. And so the court nullifies that flight provision. The trust remains in that jurisdiction and is subject to civil proceeding. Ours is a retroactive flight provision. That's why we've utilized the Wyoming Trust uh, Asset Protection Benefits. Trust Section 4-10-515 of the Wyoming Trust allows for the retroactive to the point of inception transaction or transfer of that trust to the jurisdiction of Wyoming. That means that wherever you live, if your trust or you are being sued, the trust is automatically, contractually, retroactively redomiciled in Wyoming. That means that you did not take an affirmative action. As a matter of fact, the only affirmative action you could have taken would be to stop the retroactive redomicile. And since it's retroactive, and since you have taken no affirmative action, the flight provision cannot be stopped by any jurisdiction in any state. The other issue with our trust package is that it is a package that we separate assets and place each of them in a, in a separate subtrust. This substantially limits, if not negates, any attempt to sue you. So over the last six or seven years that I've been involved with Trusts Unlimited, I've seen literally dozens of other uh, constructs, of other entities, of other trusts, and I've seen absolutely nothing, nothing which comes even close to the asset protection of our trust package. Now, there are a number of reasons why you would establish this trust package, particularly prior to the revaluation of these currencies, and I'm going to review them with you. First, this trust package provides absolute privacy and anonymity, and that's because the assets held within this trust package are sealed, and the general public will have no knowledge of your net worth or your actual holdings. Second, by establishing this pre-RV asset protection trust package, and assigning your currencies to that trust package pre-RV, you will be able to successfully avoid personal IRS scrutiny. If you're holding these currencies in direct title when they revalue, the IRS computers will most likely spit out an audit. And with the potential magnitude of that revaluation relative to your prior year's earnings, you're probably looking at a full-blown six-year audit. On the other hand, if your pre-RV asset protection trust package is in place and your currencies are assigned to that trust package, you have successfully transferred the taxable event of the revaluation from yourself personally to the trust package. Now, this is important for a couple of reasons. First, there's less than a 10% chance of an IRS audit if this revaluation and the taxable event were to occur within the trust. But most importantly, even if the IRS determines to audit your trust, they can't do a six-year audit. Why? Because the only taxable event within the trust will be the revaluation itself. The third reason you'd want to establish this trust package is if you plan on gifting currency to family and friends in certain situations. Philanthropic gifting can always be done on a tax-preferred basis, either pre- or post-RV. But in order to avoid a substantial 40% federal gift tax, you're going to want to gift currencies prior to their revaluation. Now, if you're gifting to individuals that you have no problem giving them the currency to exchange for themselves or giving them the 
USD after you have conducted the exchange. That can be done outside of a trust with a standard gift letter. But if you are hesitant for any reason to give these individuals the post-RV lump sum, then you can gift to them through our unique gifting sub-trust. Now, this is another advantage of a package of trusts. By gifting through this gift sub-trust, not only will the currency and the U.S. dollars of these gifted individuals be protected along with your currency, but because you're gifting through the trust, you will have complete control of the post-RV proceeds, meaning that you can manage, invest, and distribute this money to these individuals as you deem appropriate. The fourth reason you'd want to establish this pre-RV asset protection trust package is because it's been structured in such a way as to allow your estate to bypass the cost and delay of probate and the federal estate tax. I'll give you two quick scenarios. Scenario number one, you purchase 5 million dinar for $5,000. The day after that, those currencies revalue for $25 million. The day after that, you pass away, leaving your heirs in a state of $25 million. Now that estate must go through probate, a process that ordinarily can take anywhere from 6 to 18 months. But probate is a public disclosure process, meaning that the general public will be aware of the size of your estate, who your heirs are, and how much they each stand to inherit. So if anyone feels they have a legitimate claim against you, your estate, or your heirs, they can simply file that claim with a probate court. And that could tie the estate up for years, and in some cases, even decades. And your heirs will have either limited access or no access at all to their respective inheritance until the probate process is completed. Then there's something called the federal estate tax, the tax that the federal government will assess in order for that estate to be transferred to heirs. Under current law, approximately $10 million of that $25 million estate would bypass any federal estate tax but the balance could be taxed as much as 55%. Scenario number two, you purchase 5 million dinar for $5,000. The day after that, you assign those currencies on paper to our pre-RV asset protection trust package. The day after that, those currencies revalue for $25 million. The day after that, you pass away, leaving your heirs that same estate of $25 million, but this time protected in our asset protection trust package. As a result, there will be no probate. There will be no public disclosure of your estate. Your heirs will have immediate access to their respective inheritance, and the federal estate tax will be zero, saving your heirs as much as 55% of their inheritance. The fifth reason you'd want to establish this package of asset protection trusts is for some very specific asset protection benefits, one pre-RV, one post-RV. Pre-RV, this trust package, will allow you to circumvent something called the Uniform Fraudulent Transfer Act. What does that mean? Under our system of civil procedure, you can only be sued for what you own in direct title, or the value of property at the time you transfer it out of title to an entity like our irrevocable trust package. So let's take the previous example from before. You purchase five million dinar for $5,000, you transfer those currencies to our trust. They subsequently revalue for $25 million. You begin to live a lifestyle more reflective of your newfound wealth, and a couple of years down the road, someone sees that you're living rather comfortably and decides for whatever reason that they're going to sue you. Well, this prospective plaintiff has a couple of problems. He or she better have a very strong case and very deep pockets because this trust is structured in such a way as to make it extremely expensive and extremely time-consuming to pursue civil litigation. Second and most importantly, once the prospective plaintiff learns that pursuant to the Uniform Fraudulent Transfer Act, the only thing they could ever win by way of a civil award would be $5,000, the value of the currencies at the time you transferred them out of title to the trust, 
and none of the post RV value of $25 million, there will be no lawsuit. Post RV, there's a benefit I like to refer to as limited liability stop loss. This is accomplished through a legal strategy called segregation of assets, and this protection can only be accomplished by creating a package of trusts, and this is how it would work. Again, we'll use the same example. You purchase five million dinar for five thousand dollars, transfer the currencies to our trust. They subsequently revalue for twenty-five million. Now that you have twenty-five million in trust, you decide to make some purchases. So you purchase a larger primary residence, a vacation home, perhaps a half a dozen rental properties for tax write-off and additional cash flow, a couple of cars, a boat, and let's say an RV. But as you purchase these items, they do not remain in your initial master trust, but each of them is placed in a subtrust to be managed by your master trust. Now, why is this critical from an asset protection standpoint? Well, let's say one day you're driving one of your new cars, you have an accident, the accident is clearly your fault, and tragically someone is seriously injured or even killed. Well, the family of the victim is going to want to sue you. But remember, civil suits are about monetary awards, and you don't legally own anything. So the plaintiffs would be left to sue the owner of the car that you were driving. Well, who owns that car? One of your subtrusts, of which you're merely the beneficiary. And what's in that subtrust? Merely that one car and the car insurance policy. In that scenario, the car insurance carrier will negotiate an out-of-court settlement with the victim's family. You will not be involved in those rather unpleasant negotiations. The car insurance carrier will repair or replace your car, making you whole. And this is important. All of your other assets are safely protected in other sub-trusts. Why? Because under the law, those separate sub-trusts are separate legal entities, and the plaintiff would have no standing to pursue a separate legal entity, have nothing to do with the ownership of that car. Now, these benefits are lost to you if you do not establish your pre-RV package of asset protection trusts prior to the revaluation of the dinar and these other currencies. Now, there is one other benefit, and it's this. If you are, in fact, a holder of one of our pre-RV asset protection trust packages, then you will be eligible to participate in Phase 2. All of the products, services, and professional referrals that will be made available to you after the revaluation of these currencies. I'll just make mention of one here. Trusts Unlimited will be sponsoring a post-RV seminar to be held in Disney World, Florida, approximately 30 days after the revaluation of the Iraqi dinar. Present at that seminar will, of course, be the staff of Trusts Unlimited to assist you with the management and funding of your trust packages post-RV. Many of our clients have expressed desires to establish scholarship funds, foundational trusts, special needs trusts, charitable remainder trusts, and even the more complicated 501c3 nonprofit and offshore trusts. And the proper way to fund those entities is to transfer funds directly from your pre-RV trust, which now holds your USD, to those newly formed entities. We'll also have our tax specialists there. Our offshore specialists will show you that by establishing offshore title of certain assets, you can substantially reduce and eliminate future taxes on the reinvestment of the net proceeds from the revaluation itself. We'll also have our independent fee-based wealth managers there as well. It's going to be critical for you to reposition assets after the revaluation of the dinar and these other currencies for a number of reasons. First, we know statistically that 95% of all windfalls however large and from whatever source, are lost within three to five years due to inexperience, mismanagement, and fraud. We also know that under the new G20 bank bail-in provisions, the failure of banks in the future will no longer be made whole by the general taxing authority of the respective governments, but first and foremost by the confiscation of funds at the accounts at those banks. So you're going to want to get money out of the banks and at work as quickly as possible. 
Third, we know the general global shift from fiat-based to Basel III compliant commodity-based currencies in and of itself is going to create extremely volatile financial markets, and you're going to want a substantial amount of your net worth in tangible assets. Now, our trust package is initially a package of 10 trusts consisting of one master trust that will hold your assigned currencies pre-RV, and then financial assets like bank accounts and investment accounts post-RV, one optional gift subtrust, which at any time can be converted to a standard subtrust, and eight additional subtrusts to hold physical assets like homes, cars, boats, etc. This was the simplification of a rather sophisticated trust package that we've utilized in the past for our more affluent clients, a package that had an initial cost of anywhere from six to ten thousand dollars. But when we decided to work with denarians, we knew that that price tag was going to be unaffordable for many. So by restructuring that package, we've been able to reduce the cost to $3,000. And there are several ways you can pay for that. Pay us up front. We'll discount the price further to $2,500, saving you an additional $500. If that's not possible, we do have a deferred payment arrangement. You'd make an initial payment of $525 which some would basically offset our out-of-pocket costs just to produce and deliver your trust. The balance of the $3,000 would then be paid in $100 monthly installments. We will charge no interest. The only proviso is once the revaluation of the Iraqi dinar occurs, any unpaid balance would need to be paid within 30 days. With this approach, anyone that has currencies and understands the need for getting their trust package in place pre-RV will be in a position to afford to do so. One other suggestion, we do accept credit cards. Pay us up front with a credit card. Not only will you get the $500 discount, but the minimum payment on your credit card would actually be less than the 100 a month you'd be paying us under our deferred payment arrangement. But we will work with you in whatever method works best for you. Our objective is to help you get your affairs in order and your trust in place for all of the reasons that I've discussed here. Now, we are going to go to the Q&A in a minute. Again, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to listen to what we've had to say. But again, for our first-time newer callers, I'd like to tell you just a little bit about Trusts Unlimited and why you may want to seriously consider allowing us to assist you. Our trust package was authored by our attorney, Robert Bly. He's been a practicing attorney for over 40 years, specializing in the areas of estate planning, asset protection, and offshore planning. I myself hold degrees in political science, macroeconomics, and finance. I've worked in these areas for over 38 years, and I, along with my clients, were personally involved in the reinstitution of the Kuwaiti dinar in the early 90s. So between the two of us, Robert Bly and I have over 78 years' experience working precisely in this area, and I frankly know of no firm that can make that claim. Now, Bob and I have been working together for about 10 years in the areas of estate planning, asset protection, and offshore planning, and it has been disheartening from time to time to see people walk away from sound estate planning and trust creation because of the mistaken belief that by doing so, they have somehow lost control of assets and their affairs. In point of fact, it's just the reverse. Under our system of civil procedure, it's when you hold assets in direct title that you can lose control of them. And invariably, it's at precisely those times that you need and want control. If you've lived for any length of time, you've either experienced in your own life or through friends and family things like unexpected divorce, permanent incapacitation, the onset of dementia, premature death and prolonged and complicated probate processes, and there are, of course, investment losses, business losses, and even bankruptcies. The number two loss of wealth now in the aggregate, courtesy of the information age, is identity theft. But the number one loss of personal wealth remains confiscation through civil litigation. Anything you own in direct title can be taken from you. So in point of fact, the only way that you can manage, protect, and control everything at all times and all circumstances is through the establishment of a package of irrevocable trusts, and particularly if you have an asset like these currencies that you're anticipating a substantial increase in value. 
and we at Trust Unlimited will do everything we can to help you accomplish your personal and financial objectives both pre and post RV as we understand them. So again, thanks for listening to the call. I'm going to go to the Q&A in just a moment here. Two quick rules on the Q&A. We take no service calls on the Q&A. This is reserved for individuals that have general questions about Trust Unlimited and our trust product. And for obvious reasons, your name and number must be on the screen in order to participate in the Q&A. Uh, newer callers, I'm going to give you our contact information so you may want to have a pen and paper ready. You're under absolutely no obligation whatsoever to get our initial trust package, although it does include everything you need if you should decide to proceed and establish a trust package. It has a lot of information about us, about the revaluation, about trusts in general. You can review the information, contact us if you have any questions. We'll be happy to answer your questions and there will be no consultation fee. Once again, we're doing everything we can to help you make an informed decision prior to the revaluation of these currencies for all the reasons that I've stated. So I'm going to go ahead and open the Q&A. And while I'm waiting for any potential questions, I'd like to give you our contact information. You can go to our website, which is trusts with an S, unlimitedllc.com. Our email address is trusts with an S, unlimited LLC at gmail.com. Our phone service is 307 274 4122. If you'd like to listen to a recent conference call playback, or if you'd be kind enough to refer us to someone that might be interested in our services, you can either go to YouTube and then go to Trusts Unlimited or you can go to IQD calls and go to Trusts Unlimited, or you can simply dial the same number that you dialed for this live call this afternoon with the exception of the last two digits. Rather than dialing 40, you'll dial 39 and then use the same access code, which is 739-394-POUND. If you'd like to be included on our email list, you go to our website, go to the bottom, enter your name and email address where indicated. You should be in our email list uh, within 24 hours. Bear in mind that we only send emails out periodically pre-RV, but post-RV emails could go out as often as daily. So let's go to, uh, to our callers here. Our first caller is area code 312. That's 312. Go ahead. Hey, it's Les out of Chicago. Hey, Good morning. Doing, Man, I'm doing fine. How are you? You sound better. Okay. Yeah, I'm feeling a lot better. I'm feeling a lot better. Oh. Thanks for asking. Great. What great. can I do for you today? Well, it looks like I'm the only caller. Um, <laughs> so, well, you're Iran. Not, actually. You're oh, usually coming I don't, how... I don't know why, but today you're first. Yeah, and I hesitated. I didn't even there go right are. in. Yeah. So, anyway, um, Iran has a an economy a people that they have to keep alive right and they're being allowed to with okay this thing just switched to my truck here let's switch it back okay so they're continuing to do what they're doing now yesterday the people in on another call had mentioned that their rate is still on the screen and they're adamant about it still exchanging when everything you know else which is rate the Iraqi rate or the Iranian rate the Iranian rate yeah the Iranian well, I, rate they're still saying it's going to go uh, that may be the case I don't really follow as I've said many times before um, I consider the Iranian regime to be an abomination. I have nothing to do with that country. I'm not interested in the real. I'm not interested in anything having to do with that country. However, any reinstatement, substantial reinstatement of that rate, if they're to follow the rules, means they need to be Article 8 compliant with the UN, which they are not. So I, I, I can't speak to the Iranian situation because, again, I have nothing to do with those folks. Well, they're saying they're Basel, 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 Basel 3, 3, and uh, they've got all the things that they need. 
I, well, and like they're I okay said, with the IMS. That's why I was just wondering. Well, that's I, I don't know that that's right the now. case. I, 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 can't, I can't affirmatively okay. refute that, but if I had to hazard a guess, I would say that that's not, in fact, true. Article 8 of the U.N. Uh, explicitly states that you have mm -hmm. to have a stable internal political system and you cannot be involved in the internal affairs of neighboring countries. Iran has broken every rule in the book, so uh, I, I just don't see it happening. I could be wrong, but, you know, if, if I had to uh, – I am I just wouldn't personally invest a dime in the real, but that's just me. So what what's going on with Iraq now since they're supposed to have a meeting on – Thursday, and they take these four seats, which they claim that they've given the PM the power to appoint the seats, and now they're saying on Monday that they've all agreed to not disagree, and they have the four... Well, my, my understanding is that they're okay with three of the four. They still have an issue with um, the Minister of the Interior, but... Um, but uh, uh, Mahdi has agreed that if he, they simply can't get that individual through, then he will select a temporary proxy that is acceptable to the parliament. So we'll just have to see. It's, it's, it's a never-ending cascade of negotiations with these people. So they can set a date. They can state what the agenda is. And God only knows what's going to happen. Mm. Okay. All right, we'll cool in the game. See. We'll just have to see. We have to be yeah. hopeful. If they get three of the four through and we're stuck with this last guy, then I consider that a win. So do you think that they will allow it to proceed if, with if three I, out of the four? Well, if, if we get to that point, what I think they'll do is I think that Mahdi will relent um, because, remember, they've given him until June 1st to make, to make sure that this is all done, or they he or he risks a, a non-confidence vote. So, uh, so like I said, I, I'm doubtful they'll get all four th uh, through. But if they get three out of the four, to me, that's a win because at that point, Mahdi's going to have to uh, concede the point and pick someone acceptable to the parliament. Okay, great. Well, thanks again for all taking right. my call, and okay, have a great day. And say hi to the professor. Take care. Bye bye, Les. Okay, our next caller is area code 352. That's 352. Go ahead. Hey, hey hello, guy. How you doing? Okay, who's this? Yeah, my name is Willie. Let me, let me ask you a question real quick. I got on the call kind of late. Did you say anything about uh, – there's a term they call prosturbies. Am I saying that right? Can yeah, you kind of touch on can you, can, yeah. Yeah, can you kind of touch on that term? Yeah, Presterpe's clause is a clause that's fairly uh, common in uh, estate planning instruments, wills, uh, uh, trusts, etc. Basically, what it means is that in the attribution of an estate, it will flow to the blood relatives. So that's that's basically what Presterpe's is. Okay. Now, something else. I got a trust through you all in 2012, and uh, I've been calling, trying to get in touch with somebody. I have somebody to call me back. But I read somewhere where some guy was saying, if you haven't registered this thing each year, something I didn't know, he says a violation. Is that the case? Absolutely not. Don't listen to that guy. The, the whole purpose of a common law trust is that it does not have to be registered. One of the problems, and I touched on it earlier in the call about LLCs and sub-S's and limited partnerships and all of that, is precisely those are government institutes, and you have to register them annually, and the assets are a matter of public record. This is a completely different animal. You don't register this anywhere, and with whatever is within your irrevocable trust is sealed, meaning that they, no one can get access to what's in that trust. Okay. Now, have you guys had any updates since 2012? Because I have not been listening to these calls, so I don't know what's going on. Should I call uh, somebody to try to get in? This, this is what I suggest you do. Send an email. This is, uh, and say, send it to me, Jim George. Send me an email. Give me your full name and the name of your master trust, and tell me you're interested in a potential review and restatement of that trust, and I'll get right back to you. Jim George? 
Jim George and just go to our web. I'm just saying address it to me because it will come directly to me. I'm having a conversation with you so I'll know what we're talking about. And just, like I said, give me your full name and the name of your master trust, and I'll get back in touch with you and we'll do a review. Okay, buddy. Thank you. Yes, sir. Take that, care. That, that, that would be Jim George at Trust Unlimited, right? Correct. Correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yep. Bye-bye. Okay, our next caller is area code 336. That's 336. Go ahead. Hello, sir. Uh, this is uh, Dawson, and uh, thank you for yes. taking the call. Uh, sure. you, you mentioned a few minutes ago that you participated in the revaluation of the Kuwaiti dinar, if I heard that yes. correctly. Yes, sir. Okay, um, how, how, would, how did that work, if, if you're able to explain it? Like, uh, did you, did it was you go a to, lot. like, it a bank a it was a lot different. First of all, you only had a certain amount of time to do an exchange, and you had to do the exchange in country. So we ended up oh. having to literally contract with an individual to go there, do the exchange for us, and we had to pay him all his expenses plus a percentage of the return. So that's not going to happen here. Uh, you're going to be able to go when they announce Tier 1, certain Tier 1 and possibly even Tier 2 banks to do your exchange. Uh, it should be mm -hmm. a lot uh, easier uh, transaction than it was back then. Okay, okay, gotcha. Now, uh, do you think it'll be, um, you know, these high rates that people are are saying six and seven dollars for the dinar? What, what do you think? My my opinion is no. I think there's two scenarios. Scenario number one is that it initially comes out at a premium over the dollar, say a buck twenty, a buck twenty five, and quickly rises. Oh to the $3 threshold, or it might come out at the $3. Now, when it revalues, remember, theoretically, we're, we're talking Basel III compliance. The surrounding countries that have dinar can get $3 for their dinar today, and those countries collectively do not have the natural resources of Iraq. So either oh, we're wow. going we're gonna to come out at a premium over the dollar and, and quickly get to 3 plus or will they just come out at about three bucks, in my opinion. But no one – I can't tell – I'm not the Oracle of Delphi. I'm just giving you my best guess based on, you know, the scenario, the things that we do know. Okay, okay. And uh, my last question. Um, someone was telling me the other day that if you plan to give money to one of your kids, let's say, uh, that if you do it in the form of a, a loan, in like for 100 years or something crazy like that, that you would not have to pay taxes on it? Is that right? First of all, if you, if you, if you give currencies pre-RV, okay. then there would be no gift tax on your part. They would pay an income okay. tax on the gain. Uh, I strongly suggest you do not try to use these little devices to circumvent the IRS because the IRS is going to come back and say, let me get this straight. You got a million dollars and you don't want to pay taxes on it, so you're trying this loan arrangement, I think wow. they're going to shut that down. And you're, talking, you're talking 10, 15 grand, they're, they're going to slap you on the wrist. But you start talking millions, you might find yourself in court. So I, wow. I wouldn't play around with that stuff, personally. You do what you I want. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 I will certainly take your advice. I just, you know, a guy was just telling me that. And, you know, yeah, it just I wouldn't didn't play, sound I wouldn't play right catch with hand yeah. grenades either, okay? Even if it's not. <laughs> gotcha. All right? <laughs> gotcha. All right, listen, thank you so much. You've been very helpful today. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. All right. Bye-bye. Okay, our next caller is area code 405. That's 405. Go ahead. Hello, Jim. This is Doug in Oklahoma. I apologize yes, for uh, I was late to, late to the call because of a, a meeting. I couldn't get out, but I, you may have already discussed it, and if so, I'll have to listen to the replay. But I just saw that uh, Iraq was given the 90-day extension on the sanctions uh, over Iran. Just wondering what the impact that might have. If you've already answered uh, the question or discussed it, I'll, I'll, I'll check well, it out. I didn't answer that specific question, but that's actually a good development because what that means is even though Iraq is working with Iran, that shouldn't stop the reinstitution. They've worked out something. And I, and I alluded to this actually last week. I said, you know, they're, they're going to come up with some way to massage this thing so that Iraq – can deal with Iran, at least in the areas that are critical, like the natural gas and some other uh, things that they need. 
Uh, and in exchange for that, Iraq is going to allow the status of forces arrangement to uh, remain, and the United States American forces will be in there to try to nullify some of the uh, revolutionary guard that are running around and some of the corrupt officials and things like that. So actually, this is probably a good development. That's interesting because from the perspective that they probably, I don't know if it's actual, but they probably have to purchase the natural gas with either euros or dollars. That puts hard currencies into I Iran, which, which the U.S. doesn't necessarily like. And so from yeah, that perspective, right. I, was, I was thinking that – that might slow things down, but you know who knows. I was just concerned that. Well, the other way I, I was, look, the, other, the other way to look at it is if the currency reinstitutes, then they can deal with Iraq. I mean, they can deal with Iran using uh, the, the revalued dinar, which means they wouldn't right. need the euro, the U.S. dollar, or any other reserve currency. Now that still right. benefits Iran, but unfortunately. Um, because Iraq has such a large majority of Shia citizens, it's going to be impractical to expect there to be an absolute firewall between Iraq and Iran. It's just not going to happen. Right. And as long as the trade is done post-reinstatement, it won't matter. The whole issue here is that the U.S. doesn't want Iran to get its hands on truckloads of out-of-country dinars because then Correct. they would benefit just like anybody else that's holding the currency. Correct. Correct. And that also holds true for the corrupt officials, most of whom are Shia, that have been, that have been uh, absconding with the currencies and getting them out of country since 2003. Right. Okay, so in summary, you, you're, in your opinion, and, and uh, hopefully that because there has been – this uh, agreement between Iraq and Iran, uh, it was announced yesterday, I think, that uh, Trump is allowing this to go for another 90 days, that there has been some other aspect of it that Iraq is allowing the U.S., like you said, the SOFA agreement or something like that, to stay there. And so that's actually good for us. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, we had to make a concession. Yes, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Okay. And, uh, so, so, and, and of course, like I've said in the early, I'm not the Oracle of Delphi. I'm just giving you my best guess based on the information. The, the only way we we can only extrapolate based on the information that we have at hand, and what we have at hand is that uh, the United States needs to remain in Iraq. We need military troops in Iraq. We need influence in that area. Uh, and the only way that we're going to be able to do that is to kind of cut them a little bit of slack with Iran. Yeah. Now, Sadr, he's calling for the re, the resignation or the replacement of Mahdi by a body, and that uh, might, hopefully will put some pressure on them for, on him to uh, get this whole issue of the formation complete. Agreed. I don't know if, if I don't know if he is is as uh, excited about being prime minister for a, a an extended period of time. However. You know, once you, once these people are in those political positions, they never seem to want to give them up anyway. So hopefully right, there's yeah, well, a, yeah. a fire under his behind. So right. Anyway. And the other issue with Sistani is Sistani is demanding that all of the Revolutionary Guard and um, and the pro Iranian militias that are roving around in Iraq be disarmed. So there's you know there there's there's a lot of movement going on right now. Uh, I'm just hoping that it all comes into focus as quickly as possible because we all want to go to the bank, do our exchange and move on down the road. Well, maybe not till April 1st or better <laughs> from uh, a tax perspective. <laughs> right. Oh, so we yeah, get well, into the yeah, second oh, quarter. This, oh, at this point, at this point, we do not want to, well, th that's an interesting question because is the, let's say the reinstitution occurs in country. Technically we can't go to the bank and do an exchange with the reinstitution, but it does constitute a substantial increase in value. Is that a taxable event? We don't know yet. So we, at this point, I, I, there's no way I want to see the reinstitution in March, not at this late, right. not this late quarter. Right. No, we don't I have agree. to quarter. It's all, it creates all kinds of problems. So hopefully, and, and you know, to the to the best of everybody's advantage, it would be better if this happened after the first of April. Then there wouldn't be any question about whether or not a reinstatement constituted right. the increased value or an actual exchange. Because we wouldn't have time 
we wouldn't have time to, to ascertain from the IRS if that's their position, meaning right. that we'd have to exchange currency at a potentially low rate to pay a tax that might not even be due. Right. So, so right. That, no. that's, that, that's not going to fly. If we get – I want to see a – not a reinstitution. I want to see the reval in the first six weeks of any given quarter because that gives us eight weeks before a tax would actually be due, and we can compel the IRS and the Treasury Department to tell us what the tax implications are, and we can hold the currency and allow it to appreciate further rather than having to exchange it immediately to pay a tax, once again, that might not be due. And, and it's not necessarily on the currency that you exchange. It's the value of the currency that you hold in your possession. Precisely. According to 988E2, it says that if the gain that you would ordinarily receive from the increased value exceeds $200, you must pay the tax. So what they're telling us is it's the, re, it's the increase in value, not the date of the exchange, that is the taxable right. event. Yeah. Okay. Jim, as always, thank you very much. And yes, we look sir. forward to hearing again from you next week. Bye-bye. Yes, sir. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye-bye. All right. Okay, we have one more caller here. This is area code 754. That's 754. Go ahead. Yeah, I have a question. Um, say this uh, evaluation happens and, and we exchange and we decide to start a business. Um, what's the difference between putting uh, your – your business in a trust or getting business insurance for your business? What's the difference? Well, all the insurance would offset a loss. Putting it in the trust would protect it from civil lit- uh, litigation, presumably. Uh, and as I said earlier in the call, we've established this package of asset protection trust. This is a personal transaction on your part. After you've acquired this wealth and it's in your domestic asset protection trust, Depending upon what your future goals are, that would determine the types of entities that you would want to establish and then transfer funds to those entities. So if you were one of our clients and you came to our post-RV seminar and you said, look, I, you know, I, went, I did my exchange, I have $10 million dollars. In, in, in your asset protection trust package. I want to establish a business. I need to move $3 million. Uh, based on what you're trying to do, we would maybe suggest the type of entity you wish to establish. It might be offshore. It might be uh, 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 an offshore corporation. It would depend on specifically what you're trying to do. But can insurance do the same thing? Again, insurance offsets the loss. What we're trying to do is eliminate the, the loss entirely by protecting the asset. Now, uh, as an example, a lot of trusts in states require that you have uh, an umbrella insurance policy, and we would always recommend you have that. It's very inexpensive, and it's another layer of protection. So, for example, an individual might set up an LLC, which is a form of limited protection. They might then place that LLC within an irrevocable trust to provide another layer of protection, and they might still have an umbrella insurance policy to cover any potential loss, so you're protected three ways. Okay, I see what you're saying. So, like, if you have a trust, you don't really need insurance then, pretty much. You don't, you don't necessarily need it, but it's a good idea to have it, and some states require that you have uh, that type of umbrella protection only because it eliminates potential litigation if there is a suit. In other words, if you have the insurance and say, well, look, we have the insurance. You don't need to sue me here. We'll pay you through the insurance. Okay. All right. Thanks, man. Yes, sir. Oh, I wanted to yes, know. sir. Right. Bye-bye. Okay, that's our last caller for this afternoon. Again, I'd like to thank all of you for taking the time to listen to the call. I hope it's been informative. Those of you that are calling in for the first time or will be listening to our replay over the next 24 to 48 hours, I hope you will contact us and get our initial package if the things that we have discussed here are of interest. Once again, you're under absolutely no obligation whatsoever by getting our initial package, even though it does include everything you need should you wish to proceed. You can review the information, contact us if you have any questions. We'll be happy to answer those questions. There will be no consultation fee. Our next call is scheduled for next Wednesday, noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Certainly, if something of a dramatic nature were to happen between now and then, we'll try to get an emergency email out and schedule an emergency conference call. Failing that, we will be back again next week, 
noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Have a great week, everyone. Bye-bye.